and today I'm going coming to you with information about the Neighborhood Association Corporation, what is this, Neighborhood Assistance Corporation of America, also known as NACA. Um, if you watched my previous video, I was like, NACA is so awesome, it's so great, you should get it, and all this stuff like that, and I think I would compare the NACA program to childbirth. It's something that the process you dread, the process sucks, the finale is even harder, and then the outcome is great. That's pretty much what I can explain it as. Would I do it again? Yes and no, and I'll get into that, but it is a good program. I can't be like negative Nancy about it and say it was something absolutely terrible. Um, it is a good program because we have an amazing interest rate on a really great house here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Our process took two months and anyone out there who is in a NACA program and thinks I'm whining for no reason and they're like, oh, I've been in a NACA program for a year or two years and I still don't have a house, why are you complaining? There are many reasons why I'm complaining and I guess the biggest reason is because our financial house was in order and we were ready to buy and NACA was an option that was good for us because we wanted to take advantage of the good interest rate. It wasn't a necessity. There were actually a couple of times in the process where we went and got pre-qualified in like 10 to 15 minutes to close. So we were so irritated with the program. So let me jump right in and tell you why we were so irritated. <clears throat> So again, I'm a real estate agent. I've been an agent for almost 10 years. I'm knocking on the door of 10 years. I've closed many, many transactions. Very easy slam dunk, let's pay in cash transactions. And I've also had those transactions where I was like, Lord Jesus, I don't think she's going to get this loan. So um, there, I had a wide range of just different transactions. And this one, honestly, like no joke, not bashing the NACA program. Um, and this was definitely the hardest, hardest process ever. As an agent, as a buyer, the hardest process ever. Um, Reggie, my fiance, he actually has purchased three houses. This is his third house. And this has been the hardest one. And he's actually living with and engaged to a realtor. And I know this process. So let me show you our file. This is our NACA file. And this is from the realtor perspective and I guess the buyer perspective. So some of these things you probably wouldn't have if you were a buyer, but then you probably would. Um, I did carry this file around with me every day for two months, pretty much because you never know when they're gonna call you and ask you for a piece of paper. And um, that piece of paper could mean <laughs> um, a delay for two weeks or a delay for two days. If you don't get that piece of paper to them, it's bad. So um, this is a file that is huge. Um, if I can, let me show you a typical file. Um, this is a file that closed during that time period and it's that thick. So um, typically it has like, you know, I have like the MLS data sheets of all the houses they've seen, all the addendums, the offer to purchase, inspection, information, settlement. Check stuff, um, and I slapped them. So, um, just different things. But this is what my file will typically look like for a typical um, buyer situation. So I actually had to finish this file where I slide this into a big folder and I just filed away for five years. But this one I can't just slide into a folder. I probably had to take this mug up. But um, let me go through the process. So we started in March. Um, I don't think I have the actual form, but we've, um, I found one of these and, you know, America's best mortgage, lowest interest rate, no down payment, no closing costs, no fees, no perfect credit, um, attend this workshop. So really great. I was like, what? No fees. So I was like, cool. Um, again, trying to save money and I'll let you know what our end result is, which is wonderful. I can't complain. But the process, let me try to help you get ready for this process. So, um, this is the check, this is this. Okay, so first of all, um, again, I'm a realtor, so we went to the program on a Saturday morning. So, we're about to go now and do our big review, and they're going to applaud us for 
giving through this process. But um, basically, we went to the NACA program at the end of the NACA program or the end of the NACA assembly conference thingy. They say, if you're ready, if they hang out, we'll go ahead and put you on the schedule. So they put us on the schedule and we went and had our intake um, on a Thursday. So during that intake, they make you gather all of this paperwork and I wish I had that list available but they want check stubs, they want um, you know the typical stuff, I, I call it the 222, so they want two years of check stubs, two years of tax statements, all of your bank statements for the past two months, they want like things like that. So basic information but on top of that they also wanted to make sure you're a registered voter, they also want to make sure that um, you have a budget and that budget was very interesting because Reggie and I, we are huge Amazon.com shoppers. So we will shop online to our heart's content. So um, it really let us know how much we're paying Amazon and how much we're spending at Target. So it was a really good eye opener as a budget. And I think that's the first time we as a couple um, did a budget, even though it was not together budget yet. We're not there yet. We're not getting married until August, so we have a couple. But um, we had to do a budget. Where's your money going? What's going on? So um, our payment shop was negative, meaning we were paying uptown rent of like sixteen hundred, and it was going to go up to eighteen thirty-two if we didn't move by today. Like today was supposed to be our moving day uh, or our kickout day of our old apartment, and um, so we didn't have a payment shop. We're actually saving money. We have more space, we're in an awesome neighborhood. So we didn't have a payment shop. So it was technically, in my mind, it was a slam dunk loan because no abnormal debt, no late payments, nothing like weird or anything like that. So um, our intake process was awesome. We were approved or something like that. One of their steps is not really an approval. It's a, you're on to the next step step. Um, basically, we, they cleared us to go find a house and to put an offer and go under contract. As a realtor, I was already on it. We had like our houses narrowed down to like maybe four or five houses in a specific area of Charlotte. So that process was easy. The very, very first house that we um, looked at and we loved, we couldn't. It was a short sale and it was, it was just so pretty. It had a really pretty kitchen. It was just pretty. So um, we submitted an offer and they probably, they were like, uh-uh, we do not like working with NACA because we gave them the NACA pre-qualification letter. And so I was like, what? Why is it this agent helping us out? I can't understand. Why is the one that hates such a great program? And she was like, well, it won't close on time and I don't want to put my buyers through that or my sellers through that. And I was like, okay, whatever. So that house actually went under a contract probably with a more traditional um, product, but um, I, I just couldn't understand because again, we were NACA newbies. We had no idea what these people were talking about. Fast forward a couple weeks, we're under contract. Um, we do the typical inspections. We have someone come over to inspect the house. Um, we submit the inspection report to, um, to hand, which is a service that make sure that you're getting a sound and safe home. So we had two windows downstairs where, that were basically like guillotines where you would lift it and it would drop. You would lift it and it would drop. So they wanted us to install this spring and we could not find the spring anywhere. And um, the seller couldn't find the spring because it was a NACA required repair. So we went back and forth with that and that took forever because typically if the buyer says they don't care about the repair, then they don't care about the repair. But hand forces you to go above and beyond. So um, there was that whole process, and our particular you have to have a good mortgage counselor. And I'm not going to call names and say that this person was garbage and bad and all that stuff. But it's not a good situation when your mortgage counselor only works three days out of the week. Well, he works four, but the banks aren't open on Saturdays, so it doesn't really matter. But He's off Tuesdays and Thursdays, so if he asks you for something Monday afternoon, you give it to him within 30 minutes, he's out of the office or busy, leaves at 5 o'clock, he's not there till Wednesday morning, and he may not look at it Wednesday morning. So that was a, a process that could have taken 30, 35 days, just took a lot, lot longer. So again, if you are in the NACA program and it's been taking you forever, I'm not whining, I'm just saying 
that a lot of things could have happened a lot quicker if we had someone that was on top of the game. So, um, let's see. So we have their offer to purchase in here, due diligence, due diligence. Um, we had to have the house inspected, normal, reinspected, pan butt. Um, we had to get a clean sweep for the chimney, the chimney had to be done. So um, that was normal. But then they are, these are like screenshots. I'll have to show you what this looks like. This is a, that's a really bad screenshot. But my recommendation for you is, even though I have a folder because I need paperwork because I'm a realtor, as a buyer, anything you receive, I wouldn't stick it. They give you this big black folder that says NACA on it and it's really pretty. I wouldn't stick anything in that folder. I would literally scan everything into Google Docs and I would save it. So you and your realtor and anyone can just submit paperwork for you because time is of the essence when you're under contract. No matter what NACA says, they'll say we don't abide by the contract. You know, you can extend the contract. When you have your money on the line, you have to abide by the contract, your agreement between the buyer and the seller. You have to agree on that. Um, but this is what your NACA repair list will look like. It'll have things that you have to do, um, an estimated cost on there. Let me tell you about the inspectors. They gave me this nice little list of inspectors. I think it was like maybe eight people on there. I go through and I call them. One person's a realtor, and I'm like, that's weird. But then there's another guy that we wanted to come out and look at the house, and he's like, we are not doing NACA. Why are you on the NACA list and you're not doing NACA? Well, he said that he doesn't want to do NACA anymore or do any NACA things because it just takes him a really long time to get paperwork in and it's a, you know, more work on them. And it's true, it is more work on everyone involved. So, um, we did have to submit our pay stubs, our bank statements every time they came out. So if we miss something, which we didn't because I was on top of it, but if you miss a bank statement, it could mess up the process. So again, I was very on top of it because I really, really wanted us to close the bar deadline. And um, we were cutting it close. So this is um, a request for verification of gift letter. Um, they give you this really antiquated, unclear document that's really hard to read. If you take this to the bank, they won't sign it. And if you say MC dude, whoever your mortgage counselor is, the bank won't sign it. They'll say, oh, the bank will sign it, blah, blah, blah. The bank wouldn't sign it. We were able to get clear proof of funds with a, a typical gift letter, and it cleared. Our MC told us so many things that was, wasn't true. Um, this is gift letters, gift letters, and they wasn't gifts. Um, in this case, a gift was, we were living, to, we're, of course, we are living together, and um, we split the rent. So I always did like an automatic drop from my account to his account. So the last month, I amazingly had to start doing these gift letters, even though I didn't do it the first two times. So that was weird. Um, just random stuff. I had to keep everything because you just never know. There was a tax form that was like, it just, they just kept on one of the contingencies from the bank was you have to get this um, amount of money. Why, where did this come from? Where did this money come from? And we had to continually say this money was a tax return. Like, what's going on? It's obvious a deposit, you know, into an account. Here's the documentation to support it. But I'm telling you, that tax return gave us so much so much problems. It was absolutely ridiculous. This is a, a mortgage um, prequal letter that we received within a day when it took us um, over, over, over a week. Maybe like, mm, this is March 27th. It took us about two and a half weeks to get this even though all the finances were clear. Um, we were cleared for the max. We had no payment shock. Um, monthly gross income. Our income actually increased because our monthly gross, I would say, did it double? I'm not really, I know that it went up about $2,000 more a month in, the, in our house because Reggie changed jobs, which was awesome. Um, Reggie changed jobs and then I closed a couple of the houses and um, instead of working like 35 hours a week, I was working like 45 this is the, the checklist they give you, that if you want to close within 30 days, you have to abide by this. They don't have in here that you close 
within 30 days if your MC works every day. Um, our MC, of course, didn't work every day, so it just took longer to do that. And quick side note about MCs, I was really on a workout one day, and really irritated and stuff, and they probably hate me at my local office They're in Charlotte. I won't care. But um, I ran into an MC, and I was like, how you doing? He's like, good, how's business? Business is great, you know, whatever. And um, I was like, I'm so irritated. It's like I've given them this, let's just pretend this is it. I've given you this four times already. I don't understand why I have to give it to you again. And he's going through the same thing on his end. So it may not be the mortgage counselor. It may be the actual system that needs to be revamped and upgraded. Because um, he says that, you know, the fact that you have to submit this four times as a mortgage counselor, just imagine having to submit this, you know, four times 11 for each client and he says that he goes to the same thing and that particular week he has lost five people that were in the macro process obviously under contract um, one particular client of his he said that the builder if they were buying a new construction the builder offered them three thousand dollars just to not use NAFTA and to use their preferred lender and um, that wasn't an option for us so we just had to hang in there and grin and bear it but um, this is our file, and again, this is abnormal. Um, my, just to be prepared for the drama of NACA, you just have to be really, really on top of your game. What I did, if you can see, I have three computers open. I basically always had a tab open on one of the internet browsers of our web file, and I just watched it all the time for a contingency, and if it was a contingency that popped up, I was like, Hey honey, do you have this document? Oh, it's on Google Docs, great. Or I sent this as an email already, I'll forward it to you, just forward it to Marvin. And then towards the end, there were so many people involved. There was a processor, there was a processor times two, I don't know who this other person was. There was Ham, there was Marvin, who was our mortgage counselor. There was like all these people involved. And so eventually, to make sure that things kept on moving, we literally started to just copy and CC people. like. Um, Hey, we requested this. Marvin's not in the office. Can you take care of this and submit it to the bank? It was a pain. And we can't really blame it on one person or anything like that, but they made it very clear during the NACA process, like our, the contract that you sign with your realtor doesn't matter. It doesn't, like they will, it doesn't matter. They'll tell you, you need to go ahead and get an extension. If the seller is not willing to give you an extension, um, you could possibly pay the seller more earnest money or more due diligence money. There are some options there, but that's more money out of your pocket. If we wouldn't have closed within the specific time frame or within our contract time frame, we would have lost about three thousand dollars. That's um, due diligence. That's earnest money. That's the inspections, the reinspections, the chimney, the termite repairs. I mean, it was a life. It's it's not a lot of money. We were willing to walk away from it and find a rental house. But we just had to move away from Uptown Charlotte. Um, could this process have been easier? Yes, it could have. I recommend this program to people who who basically need it. If you have had a situation where you were foreclosed, if you sold a house at short sale, if um, you know you had financial issues a couple of years ago, but since then you have um, repaired that on your end, but your credit score hasn't skyrocketed, then yeah, this program is for you. But if you have a job, you've been on the same job forever, you've been renting and you have documentation to show that you've been renting, you've been paying everything on time, you have no NSF fees on your checking accounts, you have savings, um, and your financial house is in order, this program will annoy the absolute bejesus out of you. It will, it will annoy you to no end. You will cry, you will drink wine, you will, whisper bad words underneath your voice because um, it's a really annoying program for people who have it in order. But again, if you don't, have, if you do have issues, this is a good program. Um, so let me get to the closing statement. Um, typically, a closing statement has, you probably I might give a screenshot, I might not, this is like personal information. But um, the house was $198,750. Um, our deposit was 1500 so our fees were like zero 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 this you'll rarely ever see fees be like zero 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 
that. So we didn't pay anything like, we didn't pay for an appraisal, we didn't pay for um, mortgage insurance, we didn't pay for, um, so we didn't pay for mortgage insurance. We didn't pay for all these junk fees like attorney, recording, expediting fees, because they didn't expedite nothing. Um, we didn't pay like any weird junk things that I typically see. And I'll list those at the bottom, just things that are not on here. But basically, um, we came in with a check for $365.94 and we left with our keys. Um, and that's good because if you would have had to have paid all those junk fees, it could have easily have been like $3,000 at the closing table. Um, so it's a good program. Very little money out of our pocket. 3.5 interest rate on a 198 house. Really great. Um, I can't complain. I can complain about the process, but I can't complain about the outcome. So if you're willing to deal with the process, um, you will get a house. You'll get a house. You'll get a house. That's what the lady said at the meeting. But yeah, you will eventually get into a house if you stick with the program. We only had to stick with it for two months. If you have to stick with it longer, um, just you have to stay on top of your game. Don't get a file. Definitely scan everything into Google Documents the way we did because it's already in PDF and you can shoot that to whoever needs it very, very quickly. Because most people have a job and they're not, they don't have a fiance that's a realtor and a fiance that's always in front of the computer. So if they do ask you for something, um, you know, be ready to shoot those documents off. And just remember, your MC, your mortgage counselor, is going to be in meetings usually back to back to back. So if you shoot them an email, um, well, don't expect them to shoot you an email to let you know that something is needed for your file. You have to be proactive and sort of kind of be your own agent. Because I don't know many other agents who will do the things that I did, like track down appraisals and track down deeds and make sure that the attorney did this and did that. So because they have other buyers as well. Um, good program. I can't, I, okay, so on a scale of one to 10, for us, the experience, the customer service, um, all of that, I would give it a five, because I have some horror stories. There were some good people that were um, really great to work with at the NACA office and on the phone. And there were some horrific people that would put you on hold and then go to lunch and leave you on hold for 30 minutes until you hang up. Um, so there is, I give it a five. Um, when it comes to the program, I give it a 10 out of 10 because it is a good program. You, I know people that have bought down an interest rate to less than three and a half percent. We didn't want to do that, so we just whatever the seller gave us as closing costs, that's what we applied to our interest rate. But three and a half percent can't be hit anywhere in the market. I think right now. We're at 4.25 or something like that. So I can't complain. Um, very little money out of pocket. So five customer service. NACA needs to fix that. NACA needs to totally fix that. If you guys need to do like a team where one person's having meetings and the other person's doing paperwork and they split the money that they make, that's a better option because you would have more happy, satisfied clients. Um, but what they have going on right now just ain't working. It ain't working for no one. Everyone that we've ever talked to doing the NACA program has all said, and if you Google NACA reviews, they're all going to say, we had to submit paperwork over and over again. They were unorganized. They were unprofessional. You're gonna, so that's something they need to fix. But the program was a great idea. Yes, it puts people in homes that maybe couldn't have gotten a home. But um, for people who could have gotten a home regardless, the program is annoying. And I want to say that. It's just, it's just the truth. So um, that's my two cents. I promised this video. I'm glad that I calmed down and I was able to say good things about the program. And I'm also glad that we um, that this story was a happy ending for us because for so many people, it's not. They walk away. They say, forget this. Um, I have a preferred lender that I work with. It's not NACA. Um, it's David over at North Carolina Bank and Trust. Um, that's who I would send you to if you said, Ashley, I want a house. I would send you to that, to him um, because I know that he will do the work for you. He will work for you. He'll put you into a home. He knows all the programs here in Charlotte to make sure that you're in a good situation. So um, 
I would probably refer you to David, not to NACA, as a realtor. Um, if you said, Ash, that I want to use NACA, yes, I'll work with you. I will help you create this file, but you would have to give me access to your web file so I could submit things while you're at work because you have a job and you need to keep that job so you can stay in the NACA program and get your house. So um, that is my two cents for the day. and. I hope this was informative. If you have any specific questions about our process, um, definitely feel free to call me, 980-319-3664. You can also tweet me at Queen City Ash, um, or you can just check out my website, Charlotte's Best Real Estate, and start your home search. And I will be more than happy to find you a home here in the Charlotte Mecklenburg area. And have a great Saturday. I'm totally casual out because I'm going to be hanging out with my bestie and decorating my office it's very pleasant right now and I have a new office so have a great day I look forward to talking to you soon